How are you? Good. What are you up to? Um, look at my email. So, do you want to explain why you decided to pick Ireland as the place to study abroad? Um, yeah, I mean, it's pretty simple. I only speak English, uh, so limited to English, European-speaking countries. Um, and there aren't too many of those. So Ireland stood out just because it's an island and it's rainy, cozy, and those are things I like. And ancestors came from Ireland, so kind of reconnect with that past and get to know more about where our roots came from and how we can put that into our own family as we grow it. So yeah, came for the coziness and the connection to family and the benefits of them speaking English. Probably one of the biggest things I maybe wasn't prepared for is this is the washer and the washer is like not that big. Like it's about the size of a dish. Like if you look inside, as you can see, it's like, it's not, it's not really that large. And in order to get all of our laundry done, we have to hang dry, which again, not something I was really prepared for, but it's honestly not that bad. After you do it a couple times, I think it actually helps preserve the clothes because it's not going through hot air all the time. I'm not entirely sure, but what I do know is it makes it smell amazing out here because it just smells like fresh laundry all the time. Also, another thing that I really like that we added, take a look at that lawn. It's only about six and a half feet, but We've got fresh grass. And every time I walk outside and I see the bins, I see the grass, just kind of reminds me of home a little bit. Another thing that's kind of worth note about Ireland is that they don't have pots of coffee. I feel like in America, you just get a pot of coffee. You go out to a restaurant, you get a pot of coffee. Coffee is always on refill. You buy it once and that's it. Here, you got two options. You got an Americano and you got a latte. So it's either you get a espresso with a lot of water and a little bit of milk, or you get a latte with a lot of milk and an espresso. So another thing too, they don't have coffee pots, but what they do have is something called instant coffee. So a lot of the, I guess the more tradition. So you have one of these electric kennels, you heat that up with water, and then you've got like your tea options, your regular like instant coffee option. However, we got a coffee pot because I wasn't gonna spend a year here without a coffee pot. This is a very small bag of ground coffee. And this only holds 10 cups. If that, so it's, it's a little bit smaller, nothing wrong with that, but we did get a coffee pot. All right, so we're on our way to the temple market. Temple yes. market? And what's in the temple market? I don't know. Um, temple is an area where there's, uh, it's like really close to like the center of the city. And they said they have crafts and food and all sorts of stuff. So it's kind of, I think like a farmer's market. Yeah, luckily where we live is really close to the city center and that's kind of just where all the action happens. It's where the transportation is kind of centralized. So if you're looking to go anywhere in Dublin, you usually meet at the city center and then go out. It's where all the good bars are, good shops. It's really kind of the, the heart of the city. I think one of the best things about being here is that the food is amazing. I think the food is incredible and it's not like you're going to like a McDonald's or like a Perkins. Everything here kind of has a more homemade local feel yeah. as opposed to like getting something from a big, you know, I don't know, Waffle House or whatever. It's just, it's a lot fresher, I think here. Yeah, definitely. There's a lot of small, restaurants to eat out um, and everything's really good like the quality that we've had everywhere is really good uh, a little bit more pricey like you can't find like a cheap burger 
but no, you yeah. also can't find a bad room. If you're gonna go out here and the price just for one person is about 10 to 15 dollars for food and then six dollars if you want any drinks. I think I, I've never seen an entree that's under 14 euros. Yeah, pretty nice. Yeah, just stumbled upon this little shopping center. So some of the things that we're going to talk about here is we'll go over how to get around Dublin. We'll talk about what it's like to study in Dublin. Some of the basic things you just need to know about the language here. How do you get around Europe once you're already in the EU? What's it like living in this city? Now, you might be thinking, is this just going to be another travel channel? And that's not necessarily the case. The whole point of what we're trying to do here is trying to lay out the framework for how to survive in a city that has challenges. So Abby and I came here on September 6th and when we first arrived here it was a bit of a whirlwind because we didn't exactly have a place to live. Day one, day two, right? Day two. We are on the apartment search. That is priority number one. So we stayed in a hotel a few nights and we could not find anything. I mean, there was nothing available. There was, hotels were filling up and hostels were filling up. And so the next thing that we decided to do, we looked for short-term stays. So around here, there might be like, okay, three months you can live in a bedroom. So we basically lived in a bedroom for about a week and a half, two weeks, um, still searching and having to go to a bunch of different showings and viewings and figure out exactly where we were gonna live next because we only had three months from once we got there. Not only could we not find a place that was available, but we also had to look and try to find places that were almost an hour and a half outside of the city. So eventually we came to the realization that we might only be here for three months and then not have a place to go. Next thing that we did is we found a small, it's called a cottage, very weird looking cottage, but it's called a cottage. And so it wasn't ready, it was being renovated. And we decided just to keep talking to the landowner, to keep trying to make connections. And eventually we were able to come and we were the first people there. And once we were the first people there, they offered it to us and we took it. So now that we finally have a place to live and call home in an area that we can kind of settle in, I feel a lot more comfortable kind of sharing not only my experience, but also sharing the experience of what it's like throughout the entire time that I'll be here. You know, now I'm biking to school, I'm enjoying time with my wife, like actual downtime when we're not just looking for an apartment all the time. And honestly, the more I feel settled down or the more I am settled down, the more I feel like I have the opportunity to do some more exploring or set some roots. I think the biggest thing that's kind of a struggle when you embark on a new journey and you go to a new place is that you're trying to settle down roots in a place that you don't have any. I mean, we don't have friends here. We don't have family here. We don't really have any connections here. But the fun thing is you kind of get to start over and you kind of get the opportunity to do things again in a way that maybe you didn't feel like you could at home. So, so again, this is you know a channel for anybody who's interested in coming to Dublin or exploring the city or exploring Europe in general. It's just to kind of go through all the different things that kind of come with that. It's not like it is in the movies 
and it's really not like it is in some of the travel vlogs. I think the reason why I don't want to call this a travel vlog is because I think a travel vlog, I think it really overemphasizes or it really romanticizes what it means to travel. And this is a more raw version of what it's like to travel and live in a big city.